So far in New Venture Mentor, we've talked a lot about ways to make sure that your small business is a success. What we haven't talked about yet, though, is how to assess the viability of a business idea before you get started to determine if this is really where you should invest your blood, sweat, and tears. In my experience, the majority of aspiring entrepreneurs fall into two camps, those that are very overly optimistic and think that they're going to create the next Google overnight, and those that are extremely pessimistic and think that entrepreneurial success will never be theirs. In reality, most people and business ideas fall somewhere in between these two extremes, and it's important to access the strengths, weaknesses, and overall viability of your idea before you put a lot of resources into it. So, here are my tips for assessing the viability of a business idea. viability assessment into its simplest terms, you want to answer a few questions. What is the business model? Who else is doing what you want to do? Can a company compete against them? And what is required to be able to compete effectively and do you have the resources to be able to do so? First and foremost, you need to have a clearly defined business model. How will you bring money into the company? It's amazing how many aspiring entrepreneurs have ideas for companies, but they don't have any idea how they plan to bring in revenues. Unless you're running a nonprofit, the point of a company is to make money. So, unless you're in a position to be able to lose a bunch of money and still be okay, don't start your business until you have a solid grasp of how you'll make more money than you need to spend. Stories like Twitter, where a business grows to be a force to be reckoned with without developing a business model, are insanely rare. So, don't chase that dream unless you have another way of feeding your family. Next, you have to think about what's already out there in the space that you want to enter. The question, who else is doing what I want to do, is about competitive analysis. Every business has competitors. Even if you've come up with a truly new and innovative idea, you're still going to be competing against someone else with a substitute product or service for your customer's time and money. Therefore, step two for your business viability analysis is seeing who else is already out there doing what you want to do or something similar to what you want to do. How many competitors are there? How congested is the market? How are these competitors doing? If there are hundreds of competitors out there buying for just a few customers and every one of them is struggling to stay afloat, this probably isn't a market that you want to enter unless you have a truly revolutionary idea. If you see others having success in the market, however, you can move on to step three in the assessment process, determining if there's room for another player. What could a new entrant into that market do to make customers switch or to bring new customers into the market? How would it set itself apart from the players already in the game? If you can't answer why someone would buy from the company that you envision instead of buying from someone else who's already out there, either you or your idea isn't yet ready for small business success. If you can define why a customer would choose you over the established competitors, then you need to figure out how much it will cost you to get that message out there and whether or not you have the resources to do so, as well as how much the business operations will cost you and whether or not you have the resources to actually run the company. Take a look at my videos on customer acquisition cost and on spot analysis to get some tips for how to perform these types of analyses and then just dive into it. And remember, resources includes time, skills, experiences, and competencies as well as financial resources. At the end of the day, great ideas are a dime a dozen, but success comes from the implementation. So make sure that you're honestly and realistically assessing what it would take to successfully implement your idea and to gain customers. Then compare that to the revenue you should be able to generate for each customer based on your business model. Which is more, money in or money out? It's that simple. If you take the time to thoroughly assess the costs and potential revenues for a company before you've invested a lot of resources into it, you'll save yourself major headaches later. By avoiding business ideas destined to fail and by having mapped out potential costs and opportunities before getting overwhelmed with starting up. This is why a business plan is so important, because it forces you to assess these issues and creating a marketing plan and pro forma financials within the business plan will put the reality of the costs of starting up and running your business and gaining new customers versus the revenues you expect to generate in a clear and concise format so you can see if your business would make or lose money. It may not be fun to write the plan, and it certainly isn't fun to see when an idea you've fallen in love with turns out not to be feasible, but it's way less painful than betting the farm in an idea doomed to fail and losing everything because you didn't put in the planning work up front. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter for more tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your small business grow.